I'm Marty Stauffer. As if on the plains of Africa, exotic animals roam wild. The difference is, this is Texas. Come along and discover which of America's familiar inhabitants were originally X-rated imports. Threatened are nearly extinct in their native lands, these Texas-bred exotics, called Texotics, are making a comeback on game ranches. They include Axis deer from Asia, the most widespread and numerous. And from Africa, the scimitar-horned oryx, the sable antelope, and others. All have been given a second chance for survival in America. The black rhinoceros is endangered in the wild. Here, they're safe from poachers. But in spite of the good, introducing new species has often had devastating effects. Some imports escape, populate the countryside, and threaten native wildlife. This is a rookery of cattle egrets, located near Dallas, Texas. Rookeries are noisy, smelly, messy affairs, of up to 20,000 birds. These cattle egrets imported themselves nearly 50 years ago. On their own two wings, they migrated here from Africa by way of the Caribbean. Unaided by humans, cattle egrets have now spread worldwide. While other members of the heron family feed on fish, cattle egrets feast on insects and small creatures kicked up by their namesake, cattle. Because they're natural pest controllers, many feel they're a welcome addition. Regardless, as long as cattle ranching continues to expand around the world, so will the flocks of this adaptable egret. In our cities, even imported birds with small populations are cause for concern. Here in Chicago's Hyde Park, little bright green birds have stirred up a hornet's nest. A small breeding colony has become established, filling a niche similar to the once native, but now extinct, Carolina parakeet.
in the monk parakeets native South America, they're a serious threat to agriculture. 40% of grain and fruit crops have been destroyed by flocks of up to 50 birds. Officials are worried they'll spread across our country like the crop ravaging starling. However, protectors of the birds say they cause no damage to city gardens. And with the arrival of cold winter months, they depend on bird feeders for survival. Confined as they are to a small area in a harsh environment, it does seem unlikely these subtropical monk parakeets could be a threat to our agriculture. Here in downtown Chicago, they do little more than delight local birders. Severe winters create a climatic barrier which prevents their spreading beyond the city limits. But not all imports are accidental. Peacocks were brought from India to beautify our estates. The peacock shows no sign of reverting to the wild. But like our native wild turkey, peacocks are fiercely territorial and don't mind saying so. When males of the two species come together, as in this rare Missouri showdown, feathers fly. While this is an unusual occurrence, and the trio of turkeys definitely seems to have the upper hand, we are left to wonder how such an intruder might ultimately affect the turkey's social order. The pheasant has been turned loose in America to provide sport for hunters and food for foxes. An autumn pumpkin patch in Colorado hides a cock ring-necked pheasant. He's on the alert for a hungry red fox. Ringnecks were first brought over from China in 1881 and released in Oregon. They soon took off. The pheasant has extended its range throughout much of the U.S. farm belt and is, arguably, our most popular import. In the Ruby Mountains of Nevada, another imported Asian game bird has found a home. The Himalayan snowcock prefers living the high life, making it one of the most challenging game birds for hunters. Like the pheasant, it too is a welcome addition.
most of the animal imports we've looked at so far deserve a check mark next to their names. However, for every beneficial transplant, there have been many failures. These disastrous X-rated imports should be extradited. Unfortunately, it's too late to send most of them home. One import has proven to be our most deadly enemy. The rat is hard to love. Of Asian origin, rats stowed away on ships which carried them to virtually every corner of the world. They arrived on our shores in 1775. In return for our garbage, they give us typhus, trichnosis, salmonella, and bubonic plague. Rat-borne diseases have caused more deaths than all wars. As evening falls, they emerge among us from sewers, basements, and tunnels. Their gnawing and digging costs hundreds of millions of dollars in damage each year. The rat is surely the worst animal import, and it is virtually indestructible. Rats profit from our wasteful ways, eating almost anything, cloth, leather, even soap. Of course, they prefer the chance to sort through the evening's table scraps. environments, rats live on plant crops and stored grain. Adding expense to injury, millions of them plunder an astonishing one-fifth of the world's output each year. A high breeding rate has allowed the rapid spread of genes that provide resistance to poisons. This super rat defies our attempts to eradicate it. Some researchers say that traps and poisons only make room for more rats. Fortunately, it does have natural predators, like the aptly named rat snake. Other controllers are hawks, owls, and foxes. Rodents can quickly notice movement yet seem incapable of recognizing stationary or slow-moving objects. For all our modern advances, we are still powerless to stop the rat. In the shade of a live oak near the Savannah River in Georgia, imported wild hogs forage for acorns. These prolific creatures have been increasing their numbers dramatically. There are now two million living in 20 states. They can digest just about anything as they root their way through the forest. They eat the eggs and young of ground nesting birds like turkeys, as well as deer fawns, salamanders, 
and other small animals. Because of this destruction and their competition with native species for food, wildlife officials here in Tennessee are trying to reduce their numbers with trapping and removal. Wild hogs are resourceful and resistant to both disease and predators. Keeping them in check will be a never-ending struggle. In our waters, one import in particular is making waves. When a tanker flushed its ballast in 1986, zebra mussels invaded the Great Lakes. This accidental introduction is a tremendous threat to our native freshwater mussels. Because the Eastern European zebra mussels eat algae that form the basis of an aquatic food chain, they compete fiercely and put native species at great risk. And that's not all the damage they do. Their fingernail-sized shells clog water filtration and energy plants, which keep cities in business. It's a $4 billion problem. Industries call in zebra busters for help. The goal is to control the mussel population without hurting the environment. We may just have to learn to live with them, as we have with many other unwelcome imports. Back on land again, X-rated plants are growing to be a problem. Overgrazing by livestock allows foreign plants to prosper. Brought from Europe or Asia in contaminated grain, undesirables like leafy spurge and knapweed take over the terrain. They may be enjoyed by insects, but not by farmers and ranchers. Traditional control has been pesticide spray, but this also kills beneficial butterflies and bees. New nature-friendly technology hopes to replace chemicals with non-polluting insects. Insectaria, like this facility in Colorado, are raising insects to eat pesky plants. It seems ironic that insects are among the most beneficial of imports. Usually, the smaller a critter is, the harder it is to keep under control but nature's principle of keeping herself in balance helps insects offer us the best and safest alternative. Insects are also used to control other insects. One species used for this purpose is the Chinese mantis. It dines on pests like caterpillars, flies, and foliage-eating larvae. Introduced from China around 1896, it was one of the first mail-order predators that you could buy to control garden pests. However, 
Being a meat eater, the Chinese mantis also loves butterflies, bees, and even its own kind. It's hard to tell just how effective this amazing creature really is in our fields. The Chinese mantis may actually have only a neutral effect. South America, another unwelcome invader has waged war on our native species. Red fire ants arrived by accident on a ship that docked at Mobile, Alabama in 1953. Now these little stingers infest 400 million acres of pastures, playgrounds, and parks all across our southern states. They destroy every living thing in their path. In addition to all their other destruction, for some unknown reason, they are fatally attracted to electrical current. This can cause tremendous problems. talk about problems, there are more European starlings in the world than any other bird. In fact, there are hundreds of millions of starlings in this country alone, probably more starlings than people. They were introduced from England into New York Central Park in 1890 and soon spread across the country. Ranchers and farmers lose millions of dollars to their appetites. Unfortunately, this destructive and aggressive bird is our most widespread import. All attempts to control starlings by trapping, shooting, and poisoning have been futile. This species is here to stay, despite the countless millions which are killed each year. Down by New Orleans, a dream of wealth brought huge rodents into our country's wetlands in the 1930s. Nutria, which means otter in Spanish, were imported from South America into Louisiana for their fur. Tabasco tycoon E. A. McElhaney first imported them, but the caged animals escaped in a hurricane, and they now live wild in at least 15 states. Nutria may have profited fur trappers for a while, but now the hoped-for blessing has become a curse. Their voracious appetite gets them in trouble. They strip entire areas of vegetation and undermine roads and dams with their burrows. In fact, Nutria are so prolific that even trapping on an unlimited basis has done little to control their numbers. The female bears one to three large litters a year. 
She is unique in that her mammary glands are on her back, so the babies can even nurse as she swims. The nutria is a prime example of our interference with the balance of nature. By accident and by intent, various creatures have run riot in our country. They cost us millions of dollars in control and eradication programs each year. As for nutrias, old orange tooth seems unstoppable at this point. Alligators are their only effective natural predator. Nutria is born every minute in Bayou Country, and almost as often, one becomes lunch. So alligators at least have no complaint. We should not be too quick to condemn these new kids on the block. Most of us are not exactly natives here ourselves, and we do not always treat our environment as well as we could. Maybe this is the lesson to learn from X-rated imports. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.